Hi, my name is Senzo Kawa. I'm a lecturer at Kangala Tivet College um, under engineering and related design. So today I'll be giving you lessons on fitting and turning level three. So our topic for today, it will be uh, brakes and, and clutches, but we'll start with the, with the brakes. So <clears throat> understanding a uh, brake system, they say uh, you will learn about the functions, the working principles, and as well as the application of different types of brake system. You will also learn uh, some terminologies related to brakes uh, as, and as well as advantages and disadvantages of the brakes. Okay, function of brake systems. They say a brake system or a brake is a device operated by electromagnetic, uh, hydraulic, air pressure and mechanical means. They say in all these cases, the basic principle of operation is the same. Okay. Then purpose of a of a brake. The purpose of a brake is that brake uh, stop the vehicle or the machine within a certain distance or or time period. Uh, it also another purpose of a brake system. They say it stops the vehicle or the machine in an emergency. It keeps the vehicle or the machine stationary on a slope and <coughs> it also slows down the speed of the of the vehicle or or a machine so these are the are the purposes of of the brake okay then we have different types of brake but in this case uh, or uh, in fitting level 3 we only talk about four types of of brakes now the type number one type of a brake we have a, a disc brake a drum brake thruster brake and as well as electromagnetic brake so we are only looking at four types of, of brake on what on this fitting level three okay then we have working principles for for brake all brakes they have their own working principle so now the working principle of a disc brake they say a brake is Sorry, a brake pedal is pushed down to start the braking movement. So the pedal is attached to the piston uh, in the hydraulic or a master cylinder. Then when you push the pedal, the piston pushes against the, the fluid in the, in the cylinder. Then the fluid uh, then falls through in the brake pipelines and presses against the the piston in the brake caliper which forces the brake pedal against the display so this causes the vehicle or the machine to to slow down so this is the this is the working principle of a disc brake then main components of a disc brake then a disc brake consists of the following components number one it's a brake disc that is attached to the shaft Two, it's a pistons which is fitted in the brake calipers. Uh, it also has or it consists a brake caliper which fits over the, the brake disc. And it also has brake pads that are attached on both sides of the, of the caliper. So these are the four main or these are the main components of the disc brake or you call it a brake disc then applications now of the disc brake where is it uh, applicable uh, they say disc brakes are used in cars the uh, uh, small vehicles uh, motorcycles uh, rail vehicles and some aeroplanes so this is the type of a uh, brake that we we're talking about there then working principle of now a drum brake they say a brake pedal this is the working principle of a drum brake they say a brake pedal is pushed down to to start the braking movement the pedal is attached to a system in the hydraulic or 
master cylinder. When you push on the pedal, the piston pushes against the fluid in the cylinder, then the fluid uh, is then so the fluid is then forced into the brake cylinder and the pressure pushes the pistons against the, the brake shoes which pushes them against the inside surface of the, of the brake drum then this will cause the car to, to slow down or the machine to, to slow down. Then main components of a drum brake. Drum brake consists of the following. It's a backing plate which is attached to the axle. Then we have a brake shoes uh, that are attached to the braking plates. Then we have a brake drum which fits over the, the brake shoes. We also have a wheel cylinder which is a cylinder with the two pistons. That is a, a wheel cylinder. Then we have a, a return spring which is attached to the, to the brake shoe. And Lastly, we have an emergency brake system which is attached to the, to the brake shoe. And also we have an adjusting device which is attached to the, to the brake shoe. Then, applications of a drum brake. They say drum brakes are used in heavy duty trucks, uh, some medium trucks, motor vehicles and as well as dead bikes. Then, working principle now of an electro magnetic brakes. Remember we said we have only four types of, of brake. No. Electromagnetic brake stop the drum from unwinding when there is no when there is no electric current. Then the spring push the brake shoes against the shaft so that it cannot turn. When electric current flow, the electron the electromagnetic solenoid pulls in the in the levers. Then these levers push back the spring and the brake shoe opens so that one shaft can turn. As soon as the electric current stops flowing, the solenoid loses its magnetic force. Then the spring then pulls the shoe, the shoes break against the shaft. So when there is a power failure, the electromagnetic brake system operates automatically. So this is the working principle often in the electromagnetic brake. So the components of electromagnetic brake, they say it consists a brake shoes which are connected to the, to the levers. Uh, uh, then we have a, a spiral spring that is connected to, to two levers as well. An electromagnetic solenoid which is connected to, to two levers then applications of electromagnetic brakes. This type of a brake, they are used in cranes, trains, and as well as electro, electric motors and robotic application. This is the type of a brake that we're talking about. Okay, working principle of thruster brakes. An electric motor drives the hydraulic centrifugal pump, which in turn applies the force to the piston to push it up. Uh, the raised piston pushes the braking spring apart, which keeps the brakes with their friction pads open. When the electricity switches off, the springs automatically closes and pushes the, the friction pads against the brake disc to apply the, the brakes. So this is the working principle of the, of the thruster brake. Then, main components of the thruster brake. It consists the hydraulic centrifugal pump, which is connected to the thruster piston. It consists the thruster pistons, which is connected to the, to the pump, that is the vice versa of the hydraulic pump uh, with the thruster piston. They both are connected to, to each other. Then, a braking spring, which is connected to the, to the a piston, then we have friction pads and as well as a brake disc. So, applications of a thruster brakes, where is it or where is it used? Thruster brakes are used in marine industries, crane travels drives, and as well as elevators with escalators and 
the, the lifting bridge. Then, advantages now and disadvantages of the disc brake. Remember we said we have four types of brakes. That is a disc, drum, electromagnetic, and as well as the, the thruster. So, uh, uh, brakes as well, they also have advantages and, and disadvantages. So, advantages of a disc brake, they say, number one, they are self-adjusting. Number two, even, even, where, even when they are wet, it can still, or it can still work. It remains effective. Uh, wear can be easily seen without dismantling the brake. You can easily see wear <coughs> on this type of a brake. So, then the disadvantages of disc brakes are it, they say it wear more quickly because of small friction surface. They are sometimes noisy, these types of, of brakes. And you have to remove the brake when replacing the, the wheel bearing. So when you are replacing the wheel bearing on a car, the disadvantage of a disc brake is that you have to remove the, the whole brake system. Then, advantages and disadvantages of drum brakes. Advantages now, they say it is very, uh, it is a very compact system. Adjustments for lining wear take place automatically. And if there is wear, we can adjust the shoe by means of adjusting screw. So these are the advantages of, of a drum brake. Disadvantages, they say dust and what is not easily thrown off from within the dust and what is not easily thrown off from within the brakes. A drum cannot, despite large amount of, of heat rapidly, and it can easily expand excessively if it becomes too hot. So those are the disadvantages of the drum brake. Now, advantages and disadvantages of electromagnetic brake. Advantages, they say it is a fast response system, which means electricity, if it cuts off immediately, the brake, it, it starts up. Uh, the brake applies immediately if there is there is failure, disadvantages. In the case of power failure, the system becomes ineffective. Uh, the system depends on the flow of electric current to, to operate. Then advantages and disadvantages of thruster brake. They say advantages, they, the system aligns itself during operation. Uh, it needs a very little power uh, can be mounted and dismounted easily wherever it is used. So this is the advantage of a thruster brake. Then the disadvantages, they say uh, compatible steel discs are, are required. Brake pads must be inspected regularly for, for wear and there is a loss of braking efficiency if the brake pads overheats. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of, of brakes. Then now we move to, to clutches. Remember our topic is brakes and clutches. Clutches, the function of a clutch. They say a function of a clutch, a clutch is a mechanical part that connects a drive shaft and a driven shaft in such a way that the connection can easily be engaged and disengaged. This is the main function of a, of a clutch. Then, what is the purpose of a clutch? A clutch, it provides a misalignment of a, of a shaft. Uh, number two, uh, it reduces the transmission of shock load from one shaft to another. Number three, it, in, it introduces the protection against overload for uh, to alter the vibration characteristics of 
rotating units to provide sorry and as, as well as to provide for connection of shaft of units that are manufactured separately so these are the purposes of of a clutch or the function of a or the use of a clutch <coughs> then we have different types of clutch clutch number one that we have we have a, a single plate clutch then we have a multi-plate clutch we have a fixed weight centrifugal clutch we have a loss weight centrifugal clutch we have a cone clutch and as well as torque limiter clutch so these are all the types of a clutch that we will be seeing on this chapter of brakes and and clutches for fitting level three so let's start with the single plate clutch they say it consists of the following components number one a single plate clutch it have two flanges those two flanges are connected to the drive shaft and as well as the the driven shaft we have a fiber ring uh, which is fitted to the flange on the driven shaft and we have a helical spring which is fitted to the to the driving or to the driven shaft then we have a, a clutch lever that is fitted to the driven shaft so these are the components of the single plate clutch where do we apply or where do we use or where to find this type of a clutch we find it on table engines and as well as medium drives such as motor vehicles then we have a multi plate clutch this one it consists of the following components a pressure plate a driven plate a release bearing a clutch fork a housing then where do we use this type of a clutch you find it on road vehicles and as well as moto bikes then we have a fixed weight centrifugal clutch it consists of the components uh, component number one it's a drum component number two it's a spring which is fitted to the uh, uh, to the slippers then we have a slipper slippers you can also call them shoes uh, star wheels or or spiders uh, drive shaft as well so it consists of these main components ne? then where do we use this type of uh, a fixed weight centrifugal clutch they are used on lawn uh, mowers and as well as chain saws then we have a loose weight centrifugal clutch it consists of the following components a drum or or a pulley a sleeper which is fitted to the star wheel sleeper a uh, keep plates or you can sleepers are called are also called most shoes or you can call it a, a shoe keeper plate a, a star wheel which is connected to the to the drive shaft and the drive shaft as well then where do we find this type of uh, a clutch on land mowers that's where we find it and as well as mini motorbikes then we have a cone clutch a cone clutch consists of the following one an outer cone uh, which is keyed to the driving to the driven shaft then it also consists of an inner cone which is keyed to the to the driving shaft sometimes an examiner will say instead of outer cone will say maybe um, it's a outer it's a female cone inner it's a male cone or they will call it a, a spigot or recessor cone a spiral spring that is also a component for the cone clutch a operating lever which is engaging and disengaging the cone then where do we use or where do we find the cone clutch you find them on automobiles power trains and as well as off-road vehicles then we have a torque limiter clutch. The clutch automatically reset once over load has been has been cleared. So where do we where do we uh, apply this type of clutch? We apply it on conveyor 
systems as well as food processing unit. Then disadvantages and advantages of a single plate clutch. They say advantages, engagement is possible when the machine is, is in motion. Uh, it can act as a safety device in the event of overloading by, by slipping. Then the disadvantages is that slip occurs as a result of heavy loads and slip occurs between the engaging surface which results in in where so these are the advantages and disadvantages of a single plate clutch <coughs> advantages of a multi-plate clutch advantages they say it can be used where space is limited a large torque can be transmitted disadvantages the initial the initial cost of a clutch is is higher and the number of surfaces on which slip can occur is increased then advantages now of a fixed weight centrifugal clutch uh, they say engagement is possible while the machine is in motion uh, the load is applied gradually then the disadvantages of a fixed weight is that slips occur in slips occur with heavy loads and slip occur with high top then disadvantages and advantages of a loss weight centrifuga advantages of it they say engagement is possible while the machine is in motion the load is applied gradually then the disadvantages slip occurs with heavy loads and slip occurs with a with a high torque or or high power then advantages of a cone clutch is that engagement is possible while the machine is in motion minimal force is required to keep the parts in contact then the disadvantages of a cone clutch is that slip occurs between the engaging surfaces which results to wear and then advantages and disadvantages of a torque limiter the advantages they say it provides accurate overload protection torque settings remain constant then the disadvantages is that resetting torque limit uh, limiting clutch sometimes requires manual to to reset so you must have a, a manual of this type of a clutch to to reset the the torque so that is the big disadvantages or the big disadvantage of a torque limiter there is another disadvantage is that at high speed location the heat developed when the clutch slips uh, uh, when the clutch slips uh, during wear life and and performance so these are the advantages and disadvantages of our our clutch now we have to plan and prepare for brake and clutch maintenance what is it that we must do? They say after you have planned the work, you need to do, make sure that the machine is, is switched off. Before doing any maintenance on brakes and clutches, you make sure that your machine is, is switched off. I'm talking about from the, from the powers, from the main source to, to the machine. Make sure that it's off. Follow all the results of switching off and Disconnect the machine for your own safety and fellow workers. Clean and inspect assembly in order to see where the problem lies. Uh, and begin by identifying the linings and scar marks on the, on the friction surface. So that is how we plan and prepare for, for brakes and clutches maintenance. Read and interpret the, the job card. Before uh, working on brakes and clutches, you need to get a, a job cut from the, from the supervisor. Uh, to the job cut should indicate the name and the number of the machine that you will be doing that particular maintenance. Also provide details for previous work done on the machine. What did they do? What was the problem? on that machine before 
uh, you do a, a current maintenance. Understand all instruction and requirements on the on the job card. Understand what is the job. Talk to the job card. Is what they're saying to you here. Ask your supervisor if there is anything you do not understand. And lastly, carry out all instruction on the job card according to the regulations in the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 85 of 1993. Then, now obtain relevant documents. Before working on brakes and, uh, and clutches, obtain previous record of the, of the machine. The document includes the, the maintenance schedule, uh, the manufacturer's manual, and as well as the engineering drawing of the machine. Uh, interpret engineering drawings. How to interpret engineering drawings? You collect the engineering drawing for the specific machine. Uh, this may take a full view, uh, a, a, a full sorry, a full view, a half section, and a full sectional drawing. Study the drawing to find out where the brakes and clutches are located on the machine. That is how you interpret a drawing. Tools uh, that you may need for, for maintenance or when we are repairing brakes and clutches are cheek lamps, Allen keys, soft face hammers, and hydraulic jacks with flat and star screw drivers and as well as a vice grip with a, with a torque wrench. Then equipments that we need for repairing or when we are doing maintenance on brakes and clutches, we need macrometers, vernier calipers, uh, ohmmeters, uh, filler gauges to measure the gap, dial test indicators to check our, um, uh, the roundness of the shafts, lubricant with specifications and as well as the, the braking fluid. For further questions, please go to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and WhatsApp. I thank you.